looking at the uh, the site of a, a business that was started in 1874 as well. This was a uh, uh, it was called C. N. Johnston's, and they were responsible for making buses for Kern County. Uh, the very first bus used by the Kern High School District was a 1916 Mack truck converted to a nine passenger bus. Um, they, they, what they would do is they would have the frames and the engines here and then they would build the coaches and they would build them in here mainly because they couldn't get the buses over the grapevine. They would get them here but then they have to completely rebuild them because you know we're used to cars that can go 100,000 miles you know, an engine was done at 20,000 miles back in the day. My grandfather, who owned a car dealership, said he'd start up old cars and just listen to them. He goes, no, nope, they made it wrong. And he'd pass on the car because the engine was wrong. So for years, and I have a whole bunch of photographs, if, if, we can, if we can look at them, but they're photographs of the high school district bus system. So I thought that it was unusual that, you know, they would build just the bodies here but they were using revolutionary stuff that no one else was doing and they were even stealing kind of sort of from wealthy people's fancy cars their ideas to incorporate them on the buses because now today like Emmanuel do you ride a bus you've been on a school bus okay someday you will if you've ever been on a school bus now you go out the front door right all those coaches all the way up through the 1930s had individual doors and so the kids would get out whenever they wanted to so I'm thinking, this has got to be a problem. Yeah, it was a problem. <laughs> but he also, as the buses got bigger, they would incorporate things to keep them cooler. They put curtains in them and things like that to keep them, to keep them cool. Well, let's use Rolls Royce as an example. Those of you who know the history of cars know that in a Rolls Royce, you might buy a 1935 Rolls Royce and the body is two years old. I'm saying that like you guys are buying Rolls Royces all the time. But. <laughs> Okay, so that you buy a Rolls Royce, but the undercarriage, might it might be on its third body. So it was very common to pull the bodies off and replace the bodies, but keep the undercarriage going. That's what, more or less what they were doing. So we have these great, fantastic photographs at the archives at BHS and out at Transportation on Mount Vernon of a lot of his work. So 20 years ago, I walked in the front door here and they were still had all their photographs on the wall. I don't know if anyone else ever did that, but they had this stuff for a long, long time. So let's see what else they have here. Uh, no, 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 no. Many bodies of doors, okay. Many bodies had a series of doors down the side rather than a single entry. For extra style, many had upscale hardware, handles and latches that echoed the equipment of high priced automobiles of the day. This is, this is from their own information. So this is the source of all the buses for Kern County. And if those of you who know your Kern County history know that the high school district had the largest transportation system in the United States for decades, starting in the 30s, 40s, and the 50s. Okay, so across the street, you have a different series of uh, new apartments. Okay, I'll, I'll let it be one Across the street used to be an Italian market. So now you see the, the blending of uh, of different markets. What we're going to do is we're going to walk up that M Street. We're going to take. We're going to stop there for a moment. We're going to talk about uh, Colonel Baker. But as you walk by, you can see more stuff. And C. N. Johnston signed uh, the sidewalk right up here, right by where Irene is standing.